All right, well, good morning once again. Thank you for this wonderful time. When I said things were changing up, that was not what I was expecting. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful blessing. I'll tell you what else has been a wonderful blessing. Um, the hands and feet of Jesus shall be the congregation here. And as you know, we have gone through two hurricanes in the last few weeks. And things have been pretty challenging. Let me tell you some of the testimonies uh, from this week. Um, the hands and feet of Jesus, people have said, I've got challenges at my house. Trees have fallen, branches have fallen. And men and women of God have stepped up and gone to their homes and helped them clear their property. Amen for that. Amen. How about this one? Um, we need a place to stay. Um, and, and the Lord put it upon their heart to ask about opening the Connection Center here. And we had families stay here during the storm that were displaced because of the storm. We had, as many of you know, there were so many people without power. And the hands and feet of Jesus said, hey, come to my house. Come to my house. Char charge your device to my house. Hey, come to my house. Come hang out. I'll make you dinner. Hey, come to my house. You and your family guys can take hot showers and, and be able to relax. The hands and feet of Jesus in our community. Church, they will know us by our love and thank you. Thank you for showing the love of Jesus through this storm. I, I, I tell you what, that brings me so much joy. To be the shepherd of a congregation that says, I love Jesus so much, I'm going to go to bat for my neighbor. As we talked about last week. How crazy is that? We talked about this concept of our neighbor, and in the same week, we have opportunities to be a neighbor. And we step up to the plate and head out of the door. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God is so good. Amen. Amen. And we're going to continue to pray for those that, that are in the, in the midst of challenge, right? There are still some that are going through difficult times. And we want to make sure to continue to pray for them. Pray for the areas of Florida that are still affected. There are some schools, uh, mine is not one of them, but some schools that are still closed next week. And so we want to continue to keep those people in our prayer. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Word this morning. We're looking at Luke chapter 5 today, continuing our look at parables. Luke chapter 5 this morning. The message title is, Out with the Old and In with the New. And I want to encourage you this morning. I'm not content with a relationship with Jesus Christ that's, that's held on what he's done in the past. I, I want to see new miracles. I want to see new signs. I want to see new wonders. I want to see people that are far from him come to know his love in their lives. I'm not content with the past. And I hope that you are with me. I'm excited for what God is going to do. Right? We started a new chapter here at Citrus Community Church. All right, we're in chapter 2 of our story. And I'm not content with what God did in chapter 1. I want to see what he's going to do now. I want to be open and ready and willing and available, right? Because there's a newness, as we're going to talk about in our time today. Let's not be content with the status quo. Let's be willing and able and available to step into the newness that God has for us. A new vision, a new fire, a new passion. For our lost and dying friends, amen? For a community that needs to know the love of Jesus Christ. Things have been great, but God's got so much more in store. And I'm so excited for all that he's doing and all that he's yet to do, amen? And so Luke chapter 5 this morning, I'm excited for this passage because we're continuing our look at parables. And this is a parable that I have really never done extensive study in. It's not a parable that I've ministered from. And, and yet, I think there's a lot of truth that comes out from this. And I learned a lot from this, and I pray that, that you will as well, as we talk about being ready, being available, looking for a newness in our relationship with the Lord, as this passage is going to bring out. Our passage is in a different context than some of the other ones that we've talked about. Right? We've talked about most of the parables that we've gone into have been Jesus teaching the groups all right, going from place to place and teaching to groups of people. But this one, just like one of our previous ones, is in a different setting. This one here in Luke chapter 5 is at a dinner. So he's sitting at a dinner with a large group of people from all different backgrounds and, and ways of life. But Luke chapter 5 lists out that the audience contains a guy named Levi, the host, 
Levi's the host of the, the dinner. You got Jesus and his disciples. You've got some tax collectors there. That's got to be a lot of fun. And then you've got a group of Pharisees and teachers of the law. All at one wonderful dinner together. It sounds like some of your family get-togethers, amen? Having people from all different, some of you are not happy. Yeah, all different people, all different ways of life, coming together and having this meal together. And uh, some commentaries say that the teachers of the law and the Pharisees are sitting at the table complaining. Sitting at the table complaining. Whereas other commentaries say that yes, they were complaining, but they weren't at the table. They were just outside the house, yelling their complaints into the house. So regardless of what commentary you look at, the fact is the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are complaining about Jesus, right? They're complaining about what he's doing, who he's sitting with, and the context of this meal. And so in this verses that we're going to look at tonight, today, not tonight, today, in this verses, Jesus shares a parable with two metaphors. There are two that are going to be brought out in our time. New and old garments, and new and old wineskins. And he uses these images, both of them, to convey a powerful message about transformation and renewal. How many of you know that even when we know Jesus Christ, there is still room for renewal? Amen. Even when we know Jesus Christ, there is still availability to be transformed, because we do get complacent. We do. And so in looking at this today, these, these reminders for us as followers of Jesus Christ are this. We are called each and every day to embrace the new life that he offers. Each day he's got new life for us. Each day he's got new mercies for us. Each day there are new blessings for us. We've got to put back the past and welcome his fresh work, his new work in our hearts today. Amen? And so let's begin our time. It's already... Uh, it's already up there on the screen. I'm going I'm to read a couple of verses before what's up there now. I'm going to begin with verse 33. And it says there, They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And in those days, they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment and the patch from the new will not match the old. It's funny, because as we look at this passage right from the very beginning, the, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, use John the Baptist as their example, right? They say John the Baptist followers fast and, and pray. And they bring up John the Baptist as this model of religious devotion. But the truth is, if you know that period of time and the Pharisees and the religious leaders and their viewpoint of John the Baptist, they couldn't care less about John the Baptist. They hated the guy. They wanted nothing to do with him. They hold no respect for John the Baptist. It wasn't about reverence, it was about maintaining control. If I can use this example of John the Baptist to Jesus, maybe I can hold on to the control that I have and speak out against what Jesus is saying. Because Jesus is bringing a new story, right? Jesus is bringing a new chapter to what faith is and what love is. And they don't like this because it's threatening their authority. It's threatening their control. And so they start out by saying, hey, look at John the Baptist. Not because of reverence, not because they believe in what this guy is doing, but because they think that using John the Baptist will discredit Jesus and his ministry by contrasting it with what, what they believe is proper religious practice. It's funny, looking at the comparisons in the, in the scripture passages there, one of the commentaries I referred to in preparing for our time was from the New Living Translation. And they translate this verse, which is funny to me, by them coming to Jesus and saying, John the Baptist's disciples fast and pray regularly, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. Why are your disciples always eating and drinking? Which is a question I've heard a lot here at this community church. Why are we always eating and drinking? Because we love each other. Because we care. Because we're sharing life together, amen? There's times for somberness, for sure. There are times for, for intense prayer. And join us on Monday nights because we got prayer here at 6 30 every Monday night. And it's getting bigger and bigger. And I'm so excited for that. Amen. There are times for prayer. And there are times for fasting. But make no mistake, church proper balance means there's time for eating as well. 
responds to them, he didn't attack prayer. And there are even more passages where Jesus goes to the Father in prayer. Right? He doesn't attack either of those things. But what he does do, before spelling things out in the parable that we're going to show you to, is he clarifies. There is a time and a place for everything. A wedding is a time for feasting. A wedding is a time for celebration. And that's where he found himself in that context. Doesn't mean that there's no time for prayer. Doesn't mean that there's no time for fasting. It means that there's a time and place for each. Come on. Church, may that be a reminder to us. When we want to judge people, we want to say, hey, they're not doing things how I want them to do them. They're not doing things in the order I want to. There's a time and a place for everything. And maybe the season in their life right now is a season. Of, of, of feasting. Maybe there's a season in their life right now that you say, get over the fast. It's a season for them to fast. It's a season for them of prayer. May this be a reminder to us when others don't do things exactly as we want them to do. That's okay. And then, and then let's not judge others in their time and their need. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And yet it's so funny how often, even in this South context, they're at a wedding. They're talking about the context of a wedding and the bridegroom. And, oh, this is the time to fast. This is the time to fast. No, this is not the time to fast. This is the time for celebration. Amen. And may we as the church intentionally celebrate together. Amen. May we pray together. And I invite you again to come to this on Monday night when we also feast together. Amen. So looking at our parable this morning, the parable now officially begins. The parable of the new and the old garments in verse 36. It's a crazy scenario. Let's listen to verse 36. Why would someone buy a new garment, cut it up to patch up an old garment? Right? Doesn't look the same. Right? There's, there are other issues as well. But as crazy as the scenario is, that someone would buy a new shirt to cut out pieces to put on the old shirt. If we're honest with, them, with ourselves, that's often how we look at faith in Jesus Christ. If you could put up our first reminder for our time this morning. We often try to, to patch our old ways of living with bits of our new life in Christ. But faith in Jesus isn't about a quick fix or an add-on. Faith in Jesus is a complete renewal. Complete renewal. There are so many ways that this is played out in our lives, which we're going to get into in a second, but looking at the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that are asking these questions of Jesus, they were reminded that the Pharisees felt that Jesus was obligated, because they're the religious authority, Jesus is obligated to do things our way, how we think things should be done. They had established traditions and approaches over generations when it comes to faith. And here was Jesus. And Jesus is not doing things our way. He's doing things in this new way. Who does this guy think he is? I'm going to let you in on a secret. Jesus was never obligated to do things their way. Jesus was obligated to bring things a new way, a better way, a way that reconciled the relationship between God and mankind. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5.17, right? Jesus came. Christ. 
Well, I look good on the front. I put patches on the front, but the back of my clothes are still the old ways. Church, may we be renewed. It's not about patching things up with little things. It's about being renewed and putting on the new garments of praise, the new garments of hope, the new garments of grace and forgiveness. It's about being renewed fully in our heart, in our mind, in our spirit. Jesus wasn't obligated to conform to the established ways. He came to bring your transformation. Your transformation. Not to reinforce the status quo. Just as the Pharisees struggled to let go of their old ways, we too often try to fit Christ into our broken places in our lives. Instead of allowing him to, to make us new. We cling to certain habits or, or beliefs or comforts that we've held in the past. Thinking that I can hold on to these things and I'll just patch up the other areas with Christ and his love for me. But doing so means we're still holding on to the old self. Trying to cover them up with small pieces of our faith. Rather than embracing the full and total transformation that Jesus brings. Today, my prayer is that we have the courage to let go of the past fully and fully step into the new garments that Christ has for us. Instead of just adding Jesus to our old ways, may we, may we be reminded today to, to accept and fully fall into his renewal. Renew me completely, Lord. Clothe me in the new garments of grace, hope, and love. As John 10, 10 reminds us, Jesus came so that we may have life to the fullest. To the fullest. Let's not cling to the things that hold us back, church. Let's embrace our future in Him. Our future in Him. The new life He brings. It is better following Jesus than anything else that this world offers us. Nothing this world can give can satisfy like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Let's embrace the new life he offers. Amen? One that transforms us completely, freeing us from the past and opening us up to a new future, a new future, one that we never could have dreamed possible. <coughs> possible. Our first point is this parable of these new and old wineskins. The second point, I'm sorry, the new and old garments. The second point is the new and wine and the old wineskins. And this comes out of verses 37 and 38. No one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and, and the wine skins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured into new wine skins. Now, church, uh, you probably get from looking at me that I'm not the expert on wine and wine making. Um, I, I'm really good with Disney trivia and um, some music trivia, history, things like that. Wine making is not necessarily my strong suit. Um, that's just how it is. However, for my 10 year anniversary, I had the opportunity to take a trip to France. And uh, there's a number of things I remember very vividly about that trip. One of which, how many of you remember when Joe Biden fell off the bike here in the States? Remember that? I fell off the bike in France the same day, same time as him. And so when we went back to the hotel room, remember the Samantha on the news? Joe Biden fell off the bike, and you laugh because I have fallen off the bike too. Anyway, um, that's one thing I remember from that trip. And that, that hole did hurt. Ooh, it was rough. Anyway, not that bad. It One other thing that I remember about this. Are you still hearing me? All right. Um, we went on a wine tour. And not just a wine tour like a baby. We actually went to this really cool caves facility that they have there in the house. Where are they? Can you lose again? Do I need that? How you doing? Can you hear me now? Hello. Where they store these bottles of wine 
all right? In this climate control, the caves never change temperature, so they're constantly in the same temperature, and it's so neat how they take the time to, to ferment them, right? Because they go through, and it's like every few months, somebody's job, and this blew my mind, like, how do I get this job? Somebody's job is to turn them just like a quarter of an inch. <laughs> then they go to the next mountain, they turn on the bottles of wine a quarter of an inch. And as they're telling us that, I actually was writing my name in the dust on the bottle of wine. <laughs> and there's somebody, somebody out there has a bottle of wine with my name on it. Um, and I hope they're drinking responsibly, right? Amen. Um, but with that said, what a process that was. Like to see that unveiled, it takes time, right? For wine to ferment. It is a process. Now the process is different in Bible times than it is today, for sure. But, but regardless, there's still a process for the fermentation, right? It still takes time. And in Bible times, they use these wine skins, right, to assist in that process. And that's where all this comes out from. If you could put our next reminder on the screen, just as new wine needs a new wine skin, we're going to get into that process in a second. A transformed life in Christ requires new wineskins, right? A daily diet to self. Right? With new attitudes, renewed minds, and a readiness to be molded by the Holy Spirit. Molded by the Spirit. This is a passage that, that I had to learn a little bit about because uh, maybe you're a person that walks around with a wine skin. Um, I am not. And uh, in my study, very few people today use wine skins. But in biblical times, Judge they that. were sexual. They were important. Everyone had wine skins. Right? And so thinking about this, this important context, right, the wineskin, right, you probably follow along with me, you know that it's a container, right, it's, it's a container made from, from the neck skin of a goat or a sheep, all right, those two animals, all right, they would use this to store their wine into, to give it somewhere to be stored so it can ferment to be able to be used, to be consumed. This is important. Because as verse 37 brings out, if you put new wine skin in an or new wine in an old wine skin and the fermentation process starts, it would cause the old wine skin to burst. All the new wine would be wasted that was put into an old wine skin. And the wine skin then could not be used to store wine that had fermented, wine that was available for consumption. New wine. In old wine skins, ferments, burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are lost. This directly relates to ministry. As Jesus is stepping into the world and establishing a world that had already established what they thought faith was, what they thought religion was, he is saying, I bring new life, new life. I bring new invigoration to your faith. The Pharisees and the Sadducees are, are thrown off by this concept of new life. Because it seems to upend the traditions and the approaches that they have held on to for so many years. And here comes this new guy and says, you're doing things wrong. You're doing things wrong. I want to bring new life. Jesus' teaching. And the gospel that he preaches was new wine, amen? New wine, alive, potent, expanding, right? The church is growing, and they, and they couldn't be contained within the rigid framework of the old way of doing things, the old wineskin. The old wineskin represents the established ways that lack the flexibility to accommodate this new life that he offers. And church, as we look at ourselves today, as we look at our, our ministries today, we can often become so rigid, amen? So inflexible to the move of the Holy Spirit. Because contrary to popular belief, God does not always move how I want Him to. Contrary to popular belief, God does not always move the way that you want Him to. We need to be available to the leading of the Holy Spirit. How the Lord wants to lead. And when we think about that in the context of our ministries, so many have said, Lord, I've done it this way for so 
move away from this is how we've always done it. And Lord, lead me by your Holy Spirit to do what you've called me to do. We can't do things the old way. We've got a generation of kids that are dying and going to hell because they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We have got to be flexible to the move of the Holy Spirit. Lord, how can I minister to this person? Lord, lead me to minister to this person. Lord, equip me to minister to this person. Oh, it didn't work just because I did things how I've always done them. Then change your approach, amen? Change your approach. The gospel is a new way. It's a new way. And so looking at the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, the gospel could not be contained in the framework that they talked about. Church, so often we try to fit the gospel into our American mindset. And the gospel transcends our American mindset. Amen? The gospel is a new way. A way that we need to daily die to self. Daily be renewed. Daily asking the Lord, Lord, make me new. Lord, make me ready. Make me a new wineskin, ready to see new wine. Make me vibrant for the kingdom. Church, may we be devoted to ministries that are devoted to following the leading of the Holy Spirit. May we be devoted. May we be devoted. Amen. I wasn't speaking in tongues. I just stumbled over my over my over my tongue. Uh, may we be devoted, Amen, to His leading, and not be so held to how things were always done, our ideas of structure. Again, structure is important. Schedules are important. But if we are to experience new wine, God's presence, His Spirit, His, His transformative work in our lives and the lives of others, we must be willing to let Him lead. Him lead. Despite our plan. Despite our desires. Because ultimately it's about Him. Amen. Our last point. This is an interesting one. The challenge of embracing the new. Uh, many of the parables that we've talked about over the last month or so that we've been going through these have also been listed in, in other books of the scripture. So they've all been from Luke. This one is also listed in Matthew and in Mark. But this verse, at this point, what's interesting about them, and I, I, I tell you, looking at this and trying to figure that out, for some reason, this point, that verse, is not included in the other two accounts of this parable. I don't know why that is. Further study, maybe I'll have a better answer for you next week. However, looking at this in our time together, the difference is verse 39. And verse 39 says, No one after drinking old wine wants the new, for they say the old is better. Jesus is pointing out that even when many are offered something new and better, some will still resist and the whole time you do it always. They may prefer the comfort of the familiar, saying the old is better. And refuse to embrace the new life that Jesus brings to us all. And this reflects a reality in our ministry today. This reflects a reality in our world today. No matter how earnestly we follow Christ, we are going to encounter individuals that resist. They'll cling to the past, choose their perceived comfort over growth. And so often, it's not just them, it's also. Change is often uncomfortable, especially when it requires us to release old habits, mindsets, or ways of living that have become a part of who we are. But Jesus calls us to something greater. Jesus is calling us to sacrifice. And he is with us. And he has something far greater in store than the thing that you let go of that was holding you back from your potential in him. What is that? It's a life completely renewed and transformed by the Holy Spirit. Our last point, you can put up our final statement for this one. Church, by letting go of the past, we can fully embrace the freedom and the newness found in Jesus Christ. Change is tough. 
especially when it requires us to abandon old ways and embrace a new path. The church, Jesus calls us to be transformed, completely renewed, growing in Him. May we be diligently seeking out new garments of praise, new wine skins, not content with what was done yesterday, but seeking new signs, as I said before, new miracles, new opportunities to Lord move in me and move in others, I pray. Church, are we clinging to the past out of fear? Out of comfort? How can we cultivate a heart that is fully ready to embrace the new life that Jesus offers daily? We do so by keeping our focus on Him. We do so by intentionally seeking out a strong relationship with Him through prayer. Prayer. We do so find forgiveness and, and freedom and newness by offering forgiveness, amen? By letting go of that baggage that we continue to hold on to. We do this through being intentional, setting reminders, setting goals for ourselves, setting priorities. We fully embrace the freedom and newness found in Christ by doing things the hard way. The hard way. It's not easy to let go of the old wine skin. But when we do, Christ can do incredible things in the new. There are so many examples that I thought about this point in my own personal life. Because there have been many opportunities for me to kind of stretch out of my comfort zone. And I didn't know what God was doing, but I fully, fully thought and believed that God was telling me to do something to, to develop a new blind skin in my life. And it was going to be hard. And it was going to be challenging, but He was going to be with me through the process. And I think about that, stepping out in faith. When my wife finished her master's degree, we, my wife and I moved to Florida from New Jersey. And I decided that I was going to take that leap of faith and begin my studies for my master's degree. And it was challenging. It was very challenging because I hadn't been in school in quite a long time. But I knew that God would be with me again. I knew there was a purpose for this. And then finishing that master's program, I began to feel his leading to move into education, which was another new field for me. Because again, my degrees, from the one that I had finished, neither one of them were in teaching. Neither one of them were in education. And so it must certainly must be a new mindset because I had no training in lesson planning. I had no training in, in classroom management. At that point, I didn't even have kids, right? Myself, I didn't have kids. All right? But I knew that God was calling me to step out of my comfort zone and to develop in this new wineskin. I didn't know all the details. I didn't know all that was going to happen. But I knew that it was God that was leading me. And if he is for me, who can be against me? If he is with me, I got nothing to worry about. Yeah, the journey might be challenging and might be difficult, but I can do it with him. I can do it with him. And so in thinking about that, I really felt the Lord was opening my, that door for me. And in developing this, this new wineskin in my life, it extended my ministry in ways that I never imagined possible. I personally have had the opportunity to minister to, to speak into hundreds of kids, hundreds of kids on a daily basis to tell them they're loved, to tell them they're valuable in a culture that often tells us the exact opposite, amen? I've had the opportunity to encourage co-workers to speak in the lives of co-workers that never would set their foot in this church. They never would. And I've been able to co encourage co-workers that are here in this church. Amen. Having that opportunity is incredible. Incredible. The opportunities that have come as a result of developing this new mind skin are massive. And I challenge you today, think about what God can use you with. Maybe it is a, a decision of, hey, you know, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to volunteer in school. Maybe it's something a little bit scary. Maybe it's, you know what, I'm going to go back and finish that degree that I never did. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. I'm going to do something big. This idea of challenging ourselves to embrace the newness. What areas in your life? What areas? Because again, we're different. We're different. What areas in your life are areas that you're holding on to the old wineskin and the old clothes? And you've got to ask for newness. You've 
You've got to ask for a new strength, a new revelation, a new desire. This week, spend time in prayer. Ask the Lord, Lord, reveal to me what I need to let go of. What do I need to let go of? And Lord, give me the courage to embrace the newness you offer. Amen. As we look to the future of this church, God's church, amen, the future of God's church, may we be focused on what God has in store, what God has in store. We are so thankful for all that he's done, but he's not done yet. And there are big things in store, big things in store. We're reminded he wants to create new wineskins. New wine in new wineskins. And church, we want to see new ministries. Not built on our ideas of structure and scheduling, but based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. If the Lord wants us to develop a motorcycle ministry, we're going to do it. If the Lord wants us to develop, you fill in the blank. We're going to do it. Because our calling is not to be held by structure and scheduling, but to be led by the Holy Spirit to minister to our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ loves all. And he's got a new, fresh anointing. A new, fresh anointing. May we be open and receptive to receiving that today. Today. I want to see new ministers. We want to see new life groups. Amen. We want to see new programs. We want to see newness. Newness. Because there is a community out there that needs Jesus Christ. And that's our desire. To see his name praised. His name glorified. His name magnified. We don't need yesterday's wineskins. We need to be renewed through the Holy Spirit for a fresh move of God here in Beverly Hills and throughout Citrus County. Amen? Amen. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. There's a danger. And I close with this. There's a danger when things are going well. And God is moving. Amen? There's a danger when things are going well that we become complacent. Complacent and reluctant to open up to new growth and new changes. May this not be the case. May we be willing to rise to the occasion and to see the move of God like never before. Never before in this county and never before in our world. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to renew us as individuals and as a church so that we fully prepare for whatever comes. Whatever comes, that we're ready to go. With our hearts set on his vision, let's boldly step out into this new journey. Out with the old, in with the new. Ready to see God's kingdom in new, powerful, fresh ways. Amen? Lord Jesus, what a passage. What a passage. And Lord, I pray that each and every one of us, as we reflect on this over the course of this week, we continually ask you, Lord, make our garments new. Lord, make our wineskins new. Restore us, we pray. Heal us, we pray. Help us, we pray. That we can be the catalyst for change. Not on our sake, but for you. For you. We're reminded of that last verse, verse 39. Where it's stated that even when presented with this new glorious reminder of forgiveness and grace and eternity with you, there are some that still will say no. And Lord, as we pray in the past, may we continue to pray for those people. To pray for them. Not to write them off, but make them a priority in our prayer list. A priority in our encouragement. And a priority in our love, we pray. Lord, I pray right now for those here and those in our community that are going through a challenging time. There are many that are struggling with fear and anxiety as a result of these storms. Father God, your word reminds us that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And Lord, I pray right now for those that are struggling with fear and anxiety, that they would be impressed on their heart today, the power and love of Jesus Christ. That you are with them. You have not left them through all of this. You are right there with them, and you have them in the palm of your hand. And I thank you for that reminder. There have been so many times that I've been Fearful, anxious, nervous, scared. And that promise has brought me hope. 
Lord, I pray they're going to bring hope to your people today. Lord, as we go into this week, there's a lot going on. Lord, may you be magnified through us. May you be magnified through each and every ministry, each and every program. We thank you for our food ministry. Continue to bless that because they're going to be giving food out this Wednesday. We thank you for all the life groups, Lord. May you be magnified through each of these life groups. Lord, in all that we say and do, may we open to the newness of the Holy Spirit and the calling that you place in our lives. In your precious name, we know you pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad the kids love the message. <laughs> Screaming back. That's awesome. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to our elders. I thank you, everyone, for the, the, the card. God is so good. Amen. Amen. It is a privilege to serve. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I put out there one last time. If there are any needs and challenges from this morning, we have a number of individuals that have said, let me help out. Please reach out to our number for the Connect table. We want to help you. We want to serve you. Amen. God did not just put us here to just preach the gospel. He also put us here to the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you.